That's members of the group figure skating in Harlem congratulating Olympic gold medalist Nathan Chan on his historic win at the Winter Games in Beijing. Chen's mesmerizing performance dominated the men's finger skating short program. He's known as the quad king for his impressive quadruple spins. Chen became the first Asian American man to medal in figure skating singles at the Olympics. And he's the first American to do so in more than a decade. And Nathan joins us now in studio. Nathan, good morning and congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, the Quad King. The other day in my living room, this is true, I stood there and tried to do just one thing. <laughs> How'd that go? With no skates on <laughs> and a hardwood floor. It didn't work out well. <laughs> so congratulations. Amazing performance. You seem to be having the time of your life, which is what's interesting about it. How are you feeling now? I feel great. Um, it's been about two weeks since I competed, and uh, a lot of things have gone on during that period of time. You know, there's a lot of media and a lot of things that are associated to the Olympics, but it's been a really fun ride so far. Has it settled? Uh, I mean, you've got the medal there around your neck. Does, sure. does it feel real yet? <laughs> it definitely, this whole experience has, has felt very surreal. You know, I've, I've dreamed about this moment for a long time, um, and you can never really plan for exactly what it'll feel like, but, you know, being able to see some of my family yesterday and, uh, uh, just being able to talk to them throughout the experience of the games has been really special. I, I talked with you in Pyeongchang mm -hmm. after you had lost and not performed the way that you had wanted to. Mm -hmm. You said you were going to use that as a learning experience in how you approach these games. So how did you use that in the lead up here? I definitely think, I mean, I learned the most from my mistakes, from the things that I don't do quite right. Um, and so 2018, I think, was a really great learning experience for me. Yeah. Um, taught me how to sort of like set my mind for competitions, how to approach competitions. A lot of what we... When we're competing, we're only on the ice for six minutes, roughly, you know, with including short program and long program. But there's like hours and hours of training that goes into it to those six minutes. So making sure you understand how to, you know, utilize those hours before the competitions to the best of your abilities uh, allows you to perform better in competition. You also, though, and Tony said that like you had so much fun. And even then, even when you didn't place where you wanted to, you seem to appreciate that moment. How are you able to do that? I certainly think over the past four years, um, I've been able to come to skating with a place of, of gratitude um, and just like recognizing how lucky and fortunate I am to have these opportunities to compete and represent the U.S., to do all these things that I love so much. You know, I spent all my life uh, practicing figure skating, but it's the one place where I feel like truly at home. So mm. to then have the opportunities to do that at a scale at, in which that I'd been dreaming about for a long yeah. time is really special. You said Michelle Kwan and Christy Yamaguchi, uh, they're your inspiration two fellow Asian-American skaters. Right. And you're the, the first man to medal, um, gold medal, in men's single. Mm -hmm. What can we do to diversify the sport? I think we're definitely doing the right things. Um, and uh, as mentioned earlier with figure skating in Harlem, where you know, there's organizations like this that are helping diversify the sport and allow skating to be an accessible sport for everyone. Um, and Team USA actually was quite diverse this time, having you know, Chloe Kim, myself, Vincent Joe. Karen Chen and uh, uh, many others that I'm leaving out. Um, but, you know, it's great to be able to have this body of Asian American representation at the Olympics, and I think that in itself is so important. Can we talk more about how you get your mind right <laughs> for sure. the performance? We've been right. talking so about this. And you're <laughs> obsessed with I'm it. kind of obsessed with it. So we sure. know music is part of it, and mm. clearly you like music in your performance. Sure. Uh, w what songs in particular do you use pre-show to get ready? It really depends on where I'm at. Physically, I suppose. I think it also depends on where I'm, what time I'm competing. I figure if it's like morning or like where I feel like I need to get jazzed up a little bit more. Um, I've traditionally listened to like songs from Eminem, from 88 Rising, um, EDM songs, Loud Luxury, uh, stuff like that to just get me amped up a little bit. As I get closer to competition, or if it's like later in the day where I'm already pretty amped up and jazzed, jazzed up, I need something that like calms me down a little bit more. So like Patrick Watson, things that are like a lot more slow and like more mel uh, melodic are things that like just help me get in my zone. And then um, Rocket Man is what you perform to, yeah. right? Uh, and Elton John congratulated you. Yeah, super you seem cool. to really love the song. Are you hearing the song? Or are you in the performance? Mm -hmm. Well, I train this program every single day, uh, many times a day. So the music is like ingrained in my, in my head at this point in time. So um, I know where the basic, where the nuances of the music are, um, and I'm pretty comfortable with the music. But certainly the music, especially when you're in a situation where you know you're you're stressed out, you're nervous, and then also you get like halfway through the program, you get pretty fatigued. Having the music sort of elevate you and give you energy is really helpful. <laughs> Well, Eminem's uh, song, Lose Yourself, is sure. an athlete's go-to song Absolutely, for yeah. the pregame. Um, but that's a great question that Tony asked about the moment. Are you an individual that completely loses yourself, and after it's done, you come to, uh -huh. or are you completely aware of every single thing, the smell, the feel, the temperature mm -hmm. of the moment? It's definitely different. There are times where I find that we enter, like, this flow state where everything just locks off, and, like, you're just, like, so 
just in this trance, you know, wow. throughout the program. But those are the times where I find I skate the best when I'm in that state, but it's not always there. Mm. And I think that this time around, like, I definitely wasn't in that specific flow state, but I've also learned to adapt to when I don't feel that flow state and still uh, try to have confidence knowing that I can still do my elements, even if I can't reach that zone. <laughs> I think people knew in 2018 we'd see you back in 2022. Mm -hmm. People are already wondering, and I know you've been asked, <laughs> what about 2026? Is this something that you can see? Because that dedication in the four years in between sure. is something most of us can't even understand. Mm -hmm. I definitely think I need to think about it a little bit more. 2026, of course, is a very exciting uh, Olympics in Milan. I think that'll be a really cool experience to have. Um, However, you know, I'm, I just got off 2022. You know, I still have four years. <laughs> we don't care. Well. We want to know like, now, Nathan. Dana, let him take a break. No, let him no, relax, no. Dana. No, for sure. It's totally fair. But, I mean, I would, I, it would be very exciting. But right now, you know, I'm just embracing this moment and then trying to live in this present and figure out what, what's to come in the next couple of years. Is there a deciding factor? Is there for you, like, I need to know by this time if I'm really going to do this? I think it's just a progression of time. You know, it depends on how, you know, this next couple months go. And then I go back to school in August right. and then how school goes and whether it's something that I'm like, hey, I'm like just really invested in school and I don't really consider anything else. Or I'm like, hey, I'm missing this aspect of my life. So it really depends. And I think it's just like a day to day sort of process. And I don't really want to put a concrete, you know, answer on, on it for yeah. myself even. What know? are you majoring in school? Uh, statistics and data science. Nice. Yes. I'd take the medal to class. If you ever <laughs> no. need an out, that should do it. No doubt about it. Well, we'll see you in Milan, okay, in four Hopefully. years. <laughs> <laughs> For the pasta, if nothing yeah. else. Fair enough, yeah. Thank you so much.